So in the last video, we created this little API client here that was going to fetch uh, data from uh, regress and we displayed it in this user component here. This time we are going to do some changes on the server side. So we will need to send post requests or put requests or delete requests or stuff like that. And we have already this concept of the query. Now we got a new concept, the concept of a mutation. So these are defined very similarly. We are going to say uh, create user and we are going to say build.mutation. Everything else is pretty much the same. So I'm going to copy and paste it from here, um, except we don't care for the response and we want to send a user in, but it doesn't have an ID yet. So I'm going to say omit from a user the ID field. And this query will then be called with, or this function will then be called with an object that is the new user we want to create. It will be sent to the server, but right now this would just do a get query like everything else. What we need to return instead here is this new object. So we are going to send it to the same URL as before, users but we are saying that it is being sent with the method post and we need a request body here. So we will say body is user. We can also duplicate this for example, for updating a user, which would in this case include the ID. And then we can say the the id and the rest of the user so we are going to post like this to this id and we are going to put the rest and this can be a put request or a patch request depending on your api it could be some something completely different here on this api it's a put request and of course we could also just say delete a user so we would say delete user and we just need the ID and we need no method body here, but it will be a delete method. So having created the three new endpoints, we also have new uh, hooks that were generated for us. So we have the use create user mutation we have the use delete user mutation and we have the use update user mutation. We export all of these and now we get back to our component. And the idea right now would be to create a new user. So creating a new user would require us to have a form where we can input information for that user. Right now, I don't really care for that. So let's just say we create a fixed user every time we are here to look at the hooks and especially how to do a mutation right now. So we care about something different. This is a call for use create user mutation without an argument. And this returns as a tuple where the first element is a function that we can call at any given time to execute this mutation and where the second uh, parameter would be a result. So we can look into is loading or if it returned any data, we could also look into the data to do something with it. Um, so we are going to say create user and create user result. And then we're going to just add a button here that we are going to call create user and on click, we are going to execute this function and we say create user. This takes a lot of stuff. This takes a first name. This is Alice. This takes a last name. Uh, this is an empty string. 
And let's make everything else empty as well, because we are only displaying the first name anyway. So if we were to click here, uh, right now we wouldn't see anything because, well, we don't have invalidation yet. This will be a later chapter and we don't refetch that list up here right now. So let's do it manually for now. So after this create user, we can say then and just use this result from our use users query here. This has a refetch method on it that we can call. So now when we reload this here, when we go over here and click our create user button, we can create as many Alice's as we like. So this was about creating a basic mutation. Next up, we will be talking about invalidation so that stuff like this gets done automatically and we don't have to call refetch by hand. See you then.